everybody, here we are again. It's uh, it's my workshop. We're here on a Thursday afternoon um, and we're looking at some wet cherry here on the lathe. I've prepped this up ready for you. This is a fairly long length that um, I started with at the beginning of the week. I've done a, a pre-recorded video that you're going to see in a couple of weeks time in turning the root ball of this one or the start of turning the root ball. It's really quite nice bit of timber. But this is in the main branch section. Or, sorry, the main trunk section actually. And we're going to turn something um, that I've done a lot of um, for teaching people that um, people that have just started or just wanted to have a quick go at turning this wet timber just turns beautifully and a little inside tip here a little bit of um, breaking the magician's rules and, and, and a spoiler if you go to a woodworking show wood turning show and you see um, demonstrator turners um, turning and creating lovely ribbons of shavings that's because it's wet timber um, they're there to put a show on for you to make uh, to make your experience at that show an exciting one and so having wet timber that creates beautiful ribbons and we're going to get some of those ribbons going and I was just saying to Finn who's behind the camera Finn's back on the camera again asking your questions um, normally if I'm wet turning I have a tarpaulin that these hooks in the ceiling that you may not see I drape the tarpaulin all the way around those hooks just to protect all my shells from getting covered in shavings. It's not there today, so we're going to get a little bit of mess, but doesn't matter. What we will need to do, though, when we finish today, is clean down the bed of the lathe. This is soaking wet tin, but I'm going to get soaked. The bed of the lathe is going to get soaked. We're going to get sap on it, and it's really corrosive stuff. So on every metal surface, including your centres and your tools, you're going to need to clean them down afterwards. And I go straight for the Camellia oil, wipe them down, then Camellia oil on the top, wipe that in nicely, and that will just prevent um, any problems. And also keep the bed from sliding, or keeps the bed sliding nicely as well. So um, really nice. So I've got two bits of kit going here. We've got the M42 steel half inch gouge, 12 mil gouge. I've got a robust 15 inch tool rest here. Um, just helps to stop any stickiness um, because that nice little hardened pin on the top lets the tool slide nicely. So we're going to start this. Now the idea of this one is a natural edge um, vessel um, and we're going to leave part of the top rim natural edge and the bark will probably come off, I'm not worried about that. Um, but I'm going to start by making a hold point, taking down some of this rough area, putting the chuck on, holding the piece in its final position, hollowing it out uh, following the contours on the outside, nice little base, parting it off. So it's, it's, it's quite a nice little project. We're not going to sand it, it's soaking wet. We're going to sand it, if you want to sand them, you sand them when they're dry. So hand sanding afterwards or leave it on its foot, let it dry a little bit. Be aware, it will move like mad. This is more of a fun turning project as opposed to a finished piece. If I wanted to finish this, I'd probably rough turn it or wait until it was dry completely. Um, but as is, this is just going to be a little bit of fun on a weekend, just making some 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 shavings or a pile of shavings. Okay, so I'm going to visor up for this one. Um, the glasses won't do it really for me. I might have potentially bits of bark flying off all over the place, and we're getting quite a big lump of timber there as well. So I'm going to visor up. So I'm going to be a little bit muffled, but I do um, I do understand that. So I will make sure that I shout a bit more for you. Okay. Finn asks questions when you have any, all right? Finn, unfortunately, has to disappear about quarter to a quarter to five. He has to go off to work. Um, so I'll be on my own from then. So if we can get the questions in early, because I won't see the screen otherwise, um, that would be appreciated. So here goes. Okay, Finn, do you want to bring that camera a bit closer? And then you can stand yourself a little bit further back. So we're going to start by forming the foot. And the foot's going to be held on a fairly small jaw, but deep. So this is a dub H, or uh, an H type jaw. It's got a gripper section on the inside, on three faces, inside two faces and outside one face. Um, but that's going to be a really nice secure hold. I've already set my calipers to size. I've measured them already. Okay, so we're going to make that foot to that size. Now, lay speed obviously goes down to zero. Well, obvious or not, it's got to go down to zero. Finn's just stepping back. There we go. And I want to get this down a little bit rounder than this because it's not allowing me to turn my lathe up yet. So we're going to concentrate on 
on the side grain. If I cut that way, I'll be hitting end grain. So I want to cut down into side grain. We just get rid of the bark first, remembering that up here needs to be natural edge. start turning the laser speed up I'm already getting covered in sap I'm already getting a spray on my smock here um, so you can get an understanding of exactly how wet this piece is it was only taken down last week let's clean up the underside Just a quick question here from Wayne. Uh, he was just wondering, in the future, could you do a demo showing how to uh, undercut the rim of a bowl? Some point in the future. Yep, no problem at all. That's a that's a nice easy one. Yep. That. It's a little bit blunt that tool. So rather than go away to the sharpening um, machine, let's just go to a smaller gouge just for the minute. Um, what centers are you turning between today? In the tail stock, I've got the Evolution Live Center, and that's got a nice big ring around that center point. In the headstock, there we've got a Pro Drive, so the 21 mil Pro Drive. So let's see how far I am with that foot. Oh, long way to go yet. around about where I want to be. I'll just flatten the corner off. There we are. Now I can hold that in the chuck now, so we'll stop that. Let's get it in its final position. We can get rid of our calipers for the moment. I'll show you the centers. There we are, the Pro Drive. Um, Martin was just wondering, do you prefer um, turning wet or dry timber? <laughs> if I, my preference is wet timber, but I don't do it very often. I'll do it for rough turning. You've seen, you've scanned around my workshop already. You've seen all the rough turn bowls everywhere. I do like that. Um, but uh, necessity says most of the turning that I'm doing is going to be dry. So preference is wet because of the way it forms, um, the way it cuts. As you can see, I'm not overly keen with the mess that it leaves behind though, because like I say, everything, if you don't spend any attention on it, will rust up. It'll, especially timbers like oak and, and yew and, and olive that have got that heavy, heavy tannic acid content. Right, I think what we'll do first is face off and then we'll get the tool rest in position again, uh, sorry, the tail stock in position again. Get that light around there. We're just going to skim that surface.
go. Um, you could drill this. I'm not going to bother today, um, but drilling it would make it a lot easier. We're simply just going to just going to turn it away. Before I do that, I'm going to get a sort of a shape going, just to get rid of some of this uh, uh, bulk. on here I want to be using the um, or cutting the side grain I don't I'm avoiding the end grain all the time too thin here but I want to give myself enough um, reduce the thickness enough so I can start the shape uh, forming we're getting there now right, um yeah uh, Frederick was just asking do you find that you have to clean all your tools down after wet turning uh, absolutely all the time we were just talking about um, using uh, chameleon oil because already that my lathe bed is absolutely soaking wet with sap my, my smock is soaking wet so no it's really really important that you do that We've got another question here from Paul. Paul's just saying um, he was thinking about buying a round skew chisel and he just wants your opinion on how easy it is to use. Round skews are nice. Um, I would always go thicker skews like that. Round skews or even beading and parting tool style skews, um, they're really good to use. Because they're thicker, um, you've got far more bevel to rub. Now I wouldn't make the, the the bevel to a cue either. I'd make it fairly dumpy to start with and then you can either keep that the skew angle on the front square or skewed. Um, they're a nice um, chisel to start with if you, you're not used to a skew. Now just look at the colour on this. This is beautiful stuff. We're going to get some light shining through in a minute. I don't expect the bark to stay there. That's one thing that probably will move or come off in a minute. Right then, let's start hollowing. I'm going to bring the camera around this way. Please. Yeah, sure. Uh, and Chris Sullivan was just asking, um, he was wondering about ear defenders. Mm. Can you recommend any um, that any to use with the Airshield Pro Visor? Yeah, well, this was the one I use. Um, these are to use, sorry, Tim. These are to use with um, my um, JSP, my um, power cap. Um, and they don't, uh, they, they can sit behind my head, so like, like that sort of thing, so they don't get in the way. Um, Lily, if you're there, could you um, put up the part numbers for the JSP ear defenders, please, the power cap ear defenders? Uh, um, the ones I wear all the time. Um, uh, Mark's just wondering, are you gonna, is this one going to be left to sort of twist and warp yeah, by itself? Uh, yeah, so 
what the plan is, guys, I'm going to... I've done a couple of recorders for you. I'm going to take some leave now for a couple of weeks. Um, I will see you two weeks today, um, live. Um, and we'll have a look at this then. We'll get it back out um, and have a look, see what it's done. So I'm turning this now at a thousand revs. Yeah. I'm gonna just be careful, I'm gonna come around your way with the shavings. Yeah, it's fine. Just over a quarter of an hour in. Well done, thank you. Finley's all nicely dressed up for work. I don't want to get him dirty, so he's um, he's he's running around the workshop to get away from the shavings. Uh, Rick was just asking, is the magnetic lamp available uh, for action stuff? Yep. If you're talking the one that I've got on the lathe now, Richard, yes. Um. This is a fantastic lamp, this one. Um, I'm not sure. Um, they are... The, the, the problem of their um, uh, their success is that they are currently out of stock at the moment, but they are coming in very, very soon if they're not already in. This isn't on a magnet. I've actually attached this one to the lathe, so I've actually used some some uh, nut and bolt there to, to, to attach it, um, which works really well, actually. Right, nice clean cut now. I'm just going to take a little bit more. The bark is coming off, so don't worry. If it flies off, don't panic. Right, let's just have a look. I just want to see how thick or thin we are. And I'm reasonably happy with that. The bark. I'm going to go a bit thinner. I think what I'll do is I'll take the bark off now so I can actually see how thick or thin the timber is. There we are. I'll be able to take the rest off in a minute. It'll fall off anyway. I want to get this a bit thinner. That's the only thing. A bit faster as well. Happy with that now, so I can carry on hollowing. Grab that light down a little bit just to see in. And we're just going to Stop the lathe, bring the tool rest a little bit closer. Always a little bit twitchy doing it with uh, moving the tool rest when there's a natural edge. But there, that's that's looking nice actually. I'm really pleased with the way the timber's working.
Do you just repeat what the timber is? Uh, this is a, a really nice bit of fresh cherry. There. It's a little bit of a treat, this one. Let's take the rest of that bark off so you can see the actual true form. And we're going to start using the light just to come through to give me an idea of how thin this is so I can make the thickness the same all the way down through. Uh, you'll see what I mean. Let's just get into position. I'm going to bring the tail stop back again, not to hold anything bar... In fact, no, we can keep the tail stop off because it's on a magnet. I'm going to use my other, the light that you've seen before. This one here, just to give us some... Right in the middle. We might want to just change a little bit now, Finn. And turn the other light down. In fact, let's turn it off. And we want to be able to see it. Can you pick that up, Finn? Can you see the light transmitting through now? Yeah. So do it so it's not in my face. the light and if we keep the tone all the way the same all the way down through you're going to be pretty sure that they, the the um, uh, the thickness is going to be the same too it's an LED light so we're not generating any heat there lovely bit of cherry with that light coming through it's quite an interesting piece that's interesting I didn't see that before I started that's gonna that's a potentially weak spot there that's a dead knot running all the way through okay I may not have been quite so brave if I had known that was there let's um, let's start working on the base and the stem a smaller tool rest. I don't need to be working on that anymore. Looking, looking good there Finn. Let me see what's going on. Mm -hmm. Really pretty when you put the light through it. Um, we're going to go to the six inch tool rest instead. I can get nice and close to that stem now. 
like I say, this is a bit of fun, guys. You're not going to... I'm just going to play with the wet timber. Right, I think what I need to do is pop the light back on. I'm starting to lose quite a bit. We'll take the other one away for the minute. See where that dead knot's going. I think I should get rid of it in a sec. Let's go to a slightly smaller gal, just go to my spindle. Just walk, working back toward the the base. Because of that dead knot, I'm not planning to go too much further. I'm nearly there, you know. Now, the parting tool is going to be used just to part this off in a minute. When you're parting off, it's quite important, rather than going down in one cut, and this is a fairly deep, this is a fairly deep parting here, if you try and do it in one cut, you'll end up binding. So I'm doing two cuts, one beside the other, just to make sure that, that nothing binds up. But now I've given myself a little bit of space, so I can start refining that, uh, that base. Uh, just a quick question from Ian. He was just saying he's just purchased the SK100 kit. Uh, he's just wondering what other uh, NSAs would you recommend to start with? Sorry, what other what to start with? NSAs? Listen. NSAs. Extras, I'm guessing. Chucks. Uh, oh, to be honest, that chuck comes with comes with the C jaws, it comes with your um, screw chuck, faceplate ring. I would wait until you find the job that needs another jaw. The job that needs another another, another jaw. That should dictate. That dictates you then to look for what's around. I mean, it's very difficult unless you know you're going to be turning a regular project at a certain size. To you know, to sort of guess what might be right for me as well may not be right for you. That's the other thing. Um, there we are. Let's take that down a little bit more. One last look, just to make sure that I've got nothing that's going to surprise me when I start to part off. Then we'll take this off. Um, I think we'll do a little bit of just tidying up on that edge before it comes off fully. So let's go with a just a 150, just a deburr. And a lot of that's the cadmium layer, so it's it's just gunk from the underside of the bark actually. So it's, it'll come off with my fingernail. Uh, just gone over half an hour in. It's going to be a short one today, guys, because there's not a lot much left, a lot, a lot more left to this one. There we are. 
when this is drying. I'm going to sand this one. I'm going to finish this one off when it's when it's dried out a little bit. I mean, you could. I mean, Phil Irons, wood turner, Phil Irons, fantastic turner. Loads of hollow form pots, that sort of stuff. He um, shared a video the other day of using air to blow out sap, and I don't know whether you can see it. Can I get that that camera right into that area, Finn? I don't know whether you can see that guys, but you can blow a little bit of that sap out. That's all that sap being blown out. You're just using the air pressure. I'm not going to say that's going to dry it all out for you, but it's certainly going to help. There we go. Great little tip there. Thank the Lions for that one. Nice little bit of drying. Right, let's part that one off. So, I'm going to give myself plenty of room. We're going to part off live on the lathe. The parting tool is going to be the one I'm using. I'm going to hold the stem of the vase here. Then we'll get the, we'll get the light on it after that. Oh, sorry, um, Ian just said um, it was a type of error. He was just um, saying, would you recommend an O'Donnell chuck? Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, my ODs, I'm using the 38 mils. Um, those are the ones I use. We had a question the other day, would you use the 50 mil and then just get the inserts? That's great, value for money, no problem with those. The thing is, with a 50 mil, the 50 mil external is always 50 mil. Whatever inserts you put in it, you might decrease the size of the holding capacity, you've still got a fairly bulky chuck. My preference is to have a smaller 38 mil O'Donnell um, where I can get into smaller areas. My hands aren't going to touch the outside of the bigger 50 mil. So for me, I, I use that, that 38 mil size for me internally is the one that I go for most of the time. But yeah, I love the old bottles. I really do. Um, and Mark was just wondering, do you put any finish on the bars even though um, you're letting it dry? No, not at this point. Um, it's nice and thin. It'll move with, the, uh, with its drying because it's thin enough. Um, you're not going to be successful all the time with these, those guys. I will say that some of them will split and their heartwood is in the center of this one. They're going to move aggressively as well. Some timbers worse than others, but you might want to use that for, for sculptural pieces as well. Um, and cer certainly things like eucalyptus are going to move wildly. Um, have a look at the work of Melvin Firminger. Go online and, and Google some of his work. He's using eucalyptus and there's a really incredible um, sculptural pieces. Right, we'll part this off. Um, one other thing before we move on, actually, um, I'm not wearing my um, dust uh, visor. The only reason I'm not wearing that is because I'm talking to you. I would still wear my powered um, uh, uh, power cap. Um, my APF 10 because we may not be releasing dust here. We are releasing some fairly nasty um, gases into the air, cyanide one. Um, so in, in big quantities, if you're doing this for a day, you make sure you wear your, your, your masks um, to protect yourselves. Um, you don't want to be taking too much of these harmful gases in. Um, you, um, I've turned a lot of laurel, and laurel is supposedly one of the worst ones. Get to that cadmium layer, those gases are, are fairly harmful, so do be careful. Okay, let's part off. So a little bit of support here. Don't be too aggressive. If you're too aggressive, you'll be left with a fairly large lump to tidy up on the underside. So just be gentle. So we're down to about three mil here now at its smallest point. So I'm just going to 
tickle the rest away. Like I say, I don't want to be too aggressive. But the most dramatic thing that's going to happen here is this is going to stop in my hand. There we are. So, little nib on the bottom. That can be paired away with a carving tool um, later on. But I just want to show you the lovely colours. Finn, could you stand, go back a little bit. The lovely colours that come from a piece of turning like that. And I always find this quite exciting. Remember, remember my story... Um, this, my story back to uh, going to a woodworking show or wood turning sh uh, show. This is why we do pieces like this um, when we're doing that type of show. We've got to attract people as they're walking by to either show off a product or show off um, your skill as a turner. Um, and having uh, lovely pieces of wet timber like this where you can sh shine light through it really helps that entertainment factor. So in terms of a... a a piece of finished work for me no probably not um, but what fun it is a great fun a great piece to do um, and you know there's not too much dust in the air there's a bit of mess and things like that but you can turn it straight away you can go and pick a piece of timber up off the ground turn it and uh, you've made something something to stand on the shelf or give away at Christmas so guys there we are um, you're not going to see me live for a couple of weeks um, but you are going to have the same videos, the same time, still coming from my workshop, even though they might be recorded. Next week we're going to do um, a three-legged stool. Um, and then the week after you're going to get the root ball, the first part of the root ball being turned of this kitty here. So from this tree. And then I'll see you again live in two weeks where we'll be finishing that root ball hollow form. Um, I'm ever so tempted to show you, but I don't want to spoil the spoil the um the surprise so finn's got a couple more questions before i sign off i think yeah sean's just saying um does bowl turning tend to generate more dust um than spindle turning it does yeah absolutely does um spindle turning you're obviously going to get some dust from from spindle turning but the amount of surface area contact on a bowl you're always going to get a lot more dust um, whatever you're doing even if you're not even sanding that day if you're just turning always just protect your lungs dust uh, um, a dust mask or full face visor would be better yes um, and John was just saying he's just starting out um, and he was just wondering how do you secure um, drive center to headstock or is it just the pressure uh, of the wood from the tailstock no absolutely because all your drive centers and your tailstock centers are on what we call a morse taper and morse tapers around about a degree so it's a very fine taper so as you put pressure against it from the timber, that locks into the headstock. You don't need to knock them in, screw them in, do anything like that at all. They just, the force from the, the tailstock does it for you. Uh, we've got another one here from Dave. Um, Dave was just saying, um, if you were to finish that one off, how would you attach it back to the lathe? So if I wanted to finish this on the lathe, I, would, I wouldn't have parted it off. I would kept it on its foot, so I can then reintroduce it to the lathe afterwards. Just like I do <coughs> all of these hollow forms up here, so all of these things, they've, they've still got their holding point here. Um, so that one, for instance, now dry, it's gone nice and oval. That can be reintroduced to the lathe. The hollowing finished, outside re, um, sort of made round again from oval, and then I can turn it around and take off the foot. That'll be something for another demo, of course. Any more thinner? Yeah, roughly how thick um, was the finished piece, do you think? The finished piece, um, it's around about three about 2.5 to 3 mil uh, on that one yeah and constant because of that light we were using the light to to make sure it's a constant thickness as well i'll be honest by the time you see me that'll be finished that'll be dry so we'll be able to i'll be able to do some hand sanding on that and get the power sander on it and that sort of thing we can get that finished fairly easily i'll probably then put a sanding sealer on under spray lacquer spray lacquer because um like we were just saying then the rotation won't be there because we won't be on the lane. Heavens have just opened. If anything, you'll get my bike from outside. Oh, yeah. Any more questions? Uh, I think that is everything. Excellent. Well, I'm, just, I'm just scrolling through. Go on, then. Uh, if um, we haven't managed to get to any of your questions and the next couple of weeks keep 
flooding uh, um, the questions in because we will get them, we will answer them. Lily's still there, of course. Craig is still there. I've got Ben, I've got Jason, all those other guys, all the other tutors that are going to be um, doing videos for you very, very soon. They're there to answer questions, so um, keep them coming in. We have got another one, uh, one from Rob. He was just saying, uh, can you part off a bowl blank? Um, he was just thinking that you uh, that you might encounter end grain so he's not sure yeah no i would never attempt to part bowl blank off because of the end grain and you're then dealing with a very weak amount of side grain so it would come off prematurely and without you knowing when either it's a little bit of a ticking time on that one so no i wouldn't i wouldn't part that off at all no side grain only uh can you use the <laughs> spray acrylic um lacquer on the wood pens on wood pens, yes you can, um, but you can get an acrylic lacquer to brush on, um, which I find a bit better. Um, no problem, the only issue is if you're spraying spraying the pens on the mandrel, you're going to get the mandrel bushings gummed up, if you're spraying them on the pen once it's put together, you're going to get the, the mechanism, the bits all gummed up. So I would probably put them on um, pins on a, a, a wooden board, just put them on, paint them in, and then just leave them to set if you wanted to use a lacquer, that is. Um, and I think I might have missed one from Chris. Sorry about that, Chris. Uh, he was just saying, um, uh, you use three polishing mops. Are two loose and one stitch, or is it the other way around? Other way around. Um, stitch you use for polish, and uh, the loose you use for wax, so the Carnauba. So light and dark, stitch for polish, Loose leaf for the wax. All right. So we've got a lot more to do with those mops because I know there's a lot of questions about them. We will do more. Okay, I think that's that's all of them. We're going to sign off. Finn needs to get to work. I need to get my bike in from outside because it's now starting to rain. So um, I'll see you live in a couple of weeks. But please watch those videos that I thought um, the the stool. Um, uh, and the uh, and the root ball, really really nice videos. I was really um, happy with the way things have turned out. So please keep watching. Keep watching Craig on a Wednesday, of course. Craig's still um, uh, demonstrating the power tools, the machinery, uh, and everything else in between. So guys, um, until Tuesday, I guess when I'll see you again. Happy turning. Have a fantastic weekend. Bye bye. Thanks for watching.